What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our coverage of Moon Hunters. My name is Splattercat. Very happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and check out a game that has really been taunting me for the last month or so. I've had this game for a while and I've wanted to record it and show it to all of you so badly. And I wasn't allowed to because you see this little floating banner right here? This little floating banner has just been in the way of me and you partaking in pixel goodness. If you've never checked out Moon Hunters before, you never heard of it. It's a top-down, it's a roguelike essentially, that uses kind of Diablo-esque combat mixed with all kinds of crafting and other little things. It's randomly generated, so you're following a hero in their quest to become an even greater hero. So you start out as kind of like a local hero, and then ultimately you start taking on greater and greater tasks in preparation for a thing that happens. And you meet random people along the way, you make friends, you'll find allies, you'll make enemies. And and honestly, the game is meant to be played pretty quickly, so I don't know how much we're going to get done today in this episode, but we're probably going to be able to do a lot of playthroughs before we hang this one up. So without further ado, let's check out Moon Hunters. I've wanted to play it on the channel so badly for so long that this feels so amazing. So new game. I'm going to join in on that game right there, and then it's going to ask us what hero we want to play. So we've got Dumuzi the Spellblade, we've got Hedwana, who's a Ritualist, and then we've got my dude right here, and Kidu the Druid. This is this is my homie right here. You can also play, I guess, Kubella the Witch. And I think that's it. We gotta unlock the rest of them. I think you meet them along the way on your quest. I've done my best not to unlock anything while I was playing the game. So I did unlock stuff when I was learning the game and playing by myself and kind of getting the mechanics in order. But at that point, I kind of deleted my entire game and wiped out the temp files and then came back so that we could do it fresh. I don't really know that much about this game, having played it for all of maybe an hour, hour and a half, because I didn't want to get too excited about it. But I had a blast with the hour I played. Let's pick our color scheme here for Enkidu. I like the green, but you know what? I'm kind of digging the earth tones right there. I think that's going to get it done. The red and the white's pretty cool, too. Actually, I like all of them. I like the teal one, too. I got a couple of pairs of earrings that are that color. They go with a shirt that I got that's got gray and it's got that teal color on it. And then the earrings go, they're like, oh, shit, he matched his earrings to his shirt. He shouldn't do that. Oh, God, we're blinded. Blinded by the stylishness. We'll go with Enkidu the Dread because he's my dude. If I have a choice, I always go with, like, naturalist shaman type characters. Where are we from? A desert tribe, the dust folk that relies on the seeker of waters to survive the harsh summers. Are we from the Wolf Clan, the secretive high tribe in the heart of the cedar forest hiding in the shade of the great trees? Oh, I don't know. I really have no preference. I've played both of them. Let's go with uh, tree people. Sure. Perhaps you've met them in a dream. The heroes that walked among us. Their stories taught us how to endure difficult times. For generations, we looked to them for strength, for guidance. Journeys end, but stories live on. That lady has no face. Long ago, in this land we call Saria, our heroes were just travelers trying to find a way home. Yeah, I don't know if anybody mentioned that, but I'm getting hungry. We need to find somewhere to camp before the first moon feast tomorrow. Ooh, first moon feast? I love feasts. I'll feast for any reason. I mean, supposing it's not like a feast of violence or something. So, welcome to the game. We control with W, A, S, and D. We're being attacked by razor monkeys over here, so you'll give me a second. Left click makes us throw our little leafy thing, so yeah, eat leaf. I'm gonna leave you behind. I'm gonna leave you to your destiny. I'm gonna leave you to your death, blade monkeys. And then we can also right click to lay down like a field of vines right there. No, not cheeky two-second internet videos. Although that would probably be more profitable than throwing these leaves right here. I'm actually gonna, it's gonna slow our enemies down. I think later on you get some upgrades that'll make those a little bit damaging. Or you can take upgrades that'll allow you to make the field bigger. There's lots and lots of stuff you can do in this game to make your character more efficient. That's a pot right there. We can actually break that to try to find treasure. Sometimes they're in there. Those things that I picked up off the razor monkeys, those things are, I think, opals, as I recall, which is pretty cool. Use them as a currency in this game. So apparently, like, opals are like a manifestation of the moon or something like that in this game. And they allow you to purchase new abilities and items and stuff like that. Hopefully we can kill off that front razor monkey right there before this gets any worse. The loot does despawn after a while. It uses like old school Nintendo rules where they were using like bit saving and stuff like that. And so unfortunately the loot can't stay on the screen forever. That is a huge pig right there. And I'm not saying that just to offend you. Like I'm not being like, you're a huge pig. Stop eating so much. That's a big boar. Boars are, oh he good. He's stuck on that p He's stuck on a human being right there, I think. If I could get the angle right, I think I might be able to cheese kill him. Yeah, cheese death. I always go for cheese death. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to fight a warthog if I don't have to. Those things are terrifying. He dropped a heart right there. 
Just in case, he said, have a heart, don't kill me. And I said, I will have a heart, yours, still beating. What does this lady have to say? Every map has random events on it, and you should really think about doing all of them. Because the way that you respond and make friends, like, in this world right here, is going to affect, if I go to tab right here, you'll get, like, reputations. And the reputations will change your stats around. So you can get a reputation for being a coward, or being a fool, or being brave, or being intellectual. And they will help you out. Even, like, the bad ones seem to actually be better than nothing. So I would say just to do all the events and do the best you can with it. She weeps silently, tears falling on a new-looking grave. She clasps a wolf's tooth pendant, white-knuckled. Tabira was the axe at my side, my strength and my shield. An evil fate has robbed me. What should I do? We can tell her to avenge, or we can tell her to accept it. I don't know what kind of culture we're in right now, whether they appreciate vengeance, revengeance, that's the even better version of vengeance, is when you got revengeance, because then it's like revenge and vengeance all at the same time. Or I don't know if it's like a, I mean, she's wearing leaves as shoulder pads, so I'm assuming in combat their people are probably not super proficient. She's got bananas in her hair, so I don't know. The banana leaf folk don't seem like they would be too incredibly violent. Then again, I throw leaves, so what am I talking shit about? VENGEANCE! I cannot fight death. I will have trouble even finding the strength to attend the full moon feast tomorrow, but maybe, maybe you. Maybe you if you can find the spirit guardian. Please. Perhaps you can somehow again access to the, have access to the afterworld. Ooh, you want me to go into hell? She falls silent, eyes newly intent on the grave. You feel more vengeful. No, you were supposed to go to hell. I'm not supposed to go to hell. Damn it. So it said we feel more vengeful. I don't know what that affected. It put a thing up above our head, though. We also have wolf form. I didn't talk about this because I felt like it. we were too early on in the episode for me to shatter your brain with the awesome that is wolf mode. Wolf mode! Although my wolf has kind of like a piggy head. And in wolf mode, you can do like a chargey dashy thing like that, and then you can bite. And it's pretty swell. In the top left-hand corner, you'll see my health my name, and then I've also got my energy meter, which allows me to recharge my wolf mode, and it allows me to throw down those leaf puddles all over the place. This is to camp. Okay, so on every single map, there's going to be a spot where you can exit the map. It's going to be called camp. So the first time you play the game, you might be like, oh, am I inspecting a camp or something? No, you're not. You're absolutely not inspecting a camp. This means that you're ending your adventure day, and you're not adventuring any longer, and then you're going to, like, cook some food, and then maybe somebody's going to wander in your campsite, and you'll do, like, a storyline element. So you want to wander around the map a little bit more. This is a game where you want to level up, you want to spend time making money, and you want to use the best of your abilities to get as many things as you can before time runs out, because the game is on a time limit. May I be guided by the Queen of Heaven, the Great Mother, in consecrating this stone and my travels. Apparently we're consecrating stones of travel or something like that. It looks like he's got like a giant piece of chalk and is just like whittling away at that stone. Not sure how effective that'll be. Like, it's known for its softness. Chalk, that's all that I'm saying. Let's see here. Is that seriously our first map? Wow, we didn't get much for our first map. Okay, that's fine. Whatever, we'll make it work. Let's go ahead and ride out. And we'll say yes, we absolutely want to camp for the night. You begin to camp for the night. The outskirts have now been cleared. Once upon a time, Enkidu walked upon the earth with a deep heart attuned to all living creatures. It seems safe here. Let's set up camp. So in between every single adventure day, this is what's going to happen. You'll come in, you can either cook a meal. And so if we cook a meal, we can't do that yet because I haven't found any ingredients, but trust me, we'll find them later. We can stargaze. It'll tell you vaguely what you'll get, so stargazing will give you faith and intellect. Hunting will give you strength, and it'll give you spirit. Keep watch will probably give us endurance and faith, and if we do a rest, we'll have charm, and then we'll have endurance. For right now, I think our character does magic damage. They don't really say, I don't think. So I'm going to stargaze for a little bit, because I want my leaves to hit harder. And Kidu stares at the night sky and attempts to comprehend. He gains wisdom, five intellect, and two faith. And so we do 10 more magical damage, and we have 10 more energy now, which is pretty sweet. A familiar face approaches the campfire. Oh, and Kidu, I'm glad it's your fire. I was walking in the darkness like Tabira would do. Zarai joins you for a round of storytelling, sharing tales of Tabira's ferocity before returning home. And Kidu gains bravery and three strength. Wow, we're making out like a bandit right now. Let's pack up. We're nearly at home now. And so now we take this to go to Kitsura. Kitsura! I wanted to point out that in Enkidu's portrait, he's growing a leaf out of his hand. I don't know when the last time he took a bath was. 
but I think the point at which you should probably draw the line is when plants are growing out of you. It, it might be time to settle down in a bathtub somewhere. Let's get the moonlight out of those opals, shall we? Let's get the moonlight out of your toothbrush. You better go find that thing. Jesus. So, we have a little bit of cash right now. Not very much. We can get aerodynamics, which means that our leaves will throw in a longer, narrower arc. I would say that that's a good idea, because that'll transform us from a point-blank character into a medium-range character. So, I'm going to take that. There's also lots of other updates we can do. We can do, like, Poison Ivy, where our vines will poison things. We've got Lion Form, which is an upgrade on Wolf Form. We can do Awe, which means that when we turn into a wolf, it'll AoE stun everything around us. There's lots of cool stuff in this game. And so if you look at our leaves now, this is a lot better for attacking large enemies. And then up close, it makes us into a shotgun where all three of our leaves are going to contact with the enemy. Can I break her pot? Good. That's what she gets for extorting me. The bird squawks in a strangely human voice and flies away. Maybe somebody can teach you to speak with animals. He's also got that killer hairdo right there. That, that rockin' hooked beak. What would a hooked beak be good for? Maybe reaching down into flowers for, like, nectar or something? The eggs are hefty and promise to make a sturdy meal. You can now cook with eggs for this and all future journeys. Oh, cool. I love eggs. Eggs are one of my favorite things, and it's really kind of heartbreaking because my lady, she hates eggs. She actually, she'll eat eggs. She doesn't like the smell of them, though. That sulfur smell that they give when you either hard boil them or when you scramble them or when you fry them or whatever. God, I love eggs, though. I'd never make it without eggs. I'm sorry for how I acted last night. Pale Dancer, forgive me. I just wish I could see Tabira one more time. I That clicked and it closed really fast, but I saw what she was going to say before. We need the most ripe fruits for the first moon feast. I've got something ripe for you. <laughs> Which is what my friends would do around that point. Uchi uchi ku, no need to worry, my little baby. Babu no no! That's one of my least favorite thing about parents is baby talk. Vasilisa will come back and the great mother will come back. Don't you cry. Uh, do you need help? Thanks. If you see a spirited young girl in the forest, ten summers old, tell Vasilisa that her father demands she return home. Yeah, I, I'm not down with the baby talk. Not feeling the baby talk. I think it's giving me quests or something like that, but I don't think we can look at them around here. I don't know. I'll have to sort that one out later. You smell like so many foreign places. Maybe I'll go traveling far from the pack someday. What are you sitting on right now? I think that's a little kid, but it's hard to tell. Anybody go, Oh, I stole your pot treasure. You had treasure in a pot. You made the ultimate adventure mistake. If you know there's going to be adventurers around, you never put your treasure in a pot because you know they're going to come by and bust that shit up for rupees. The great mother took her time with you, didn't she? Or took her time with you. Yeah, you must look bewitching in moonlight. Are you hitting on me right now? I mean, I got this crazy... I got this, like, luchador mask on, but I promise you, don't look too hard, girl. Don't look too hard. You might blind yourself on the radiance. Ooh, a couple more dollars. My tea leaves form no patterns in my cup. No skulls or birds or blades. It's just a mushy mess. What does it all mean? The villagers debate the virtues and risks of cooking soup versus stew. Well, the difference is that stew takes forever, and soup is reasonably easy. If you don't like stew all day, it's not going to be a good stew. My mom, she makes a killer beef stew. She also makes pretty good, like, everything stew. Like, for real, my mom's stew is, my mom's stew game is on point. She used to make stew probably two times a week when I was a kid. She was leaving in the crock pot all day before she went to work. The elders swap nostalgic stories and mistakes in their youth. Perhaps someone more patient would listen to their rambling. So what they're saying there is that if we pick up the patient trait, we can come back and we can actually decipher kind of the wisdom in their words. But for right now, we're impatient. And so, like yours truly, their ADD is bouncing off the walls and Inky Doo's just like, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go! Gotta make a YouTube series. Elder Botsy, it's time to start setting up for the first moon feast. Are you That's a killer mask right there. What did you get that made out of? Like a gourd? A gourd and some antlers? He just took like a pumpkin, flattened it out, and shoved some antlers through it. I like it. I mean, it's not as beautiful as me and my feather cape. As a Hawaiian, I like feather capes, but hey. Not everybody can have the radiant cape that I do. I was hoping you'd say that. I hope there's enough cake for everybody. The village gathered to feast and watch the moon rise. Everyone sang into the darkness to welcome the full moon. But she didn't rise. The singing stopped. Panic spread across the village. There is nothing to fear. The wolf clan has overcome every calamity. We will make the great mother proud until her return. In Kidu, you have to figure out what's happened. If you can find a sworn priestess, maybe she can help. So apparently we're looking for sworn priestesses. There's a guy that's on fire over here. 
Anybody want to call the fire department? We're in the middle of a forest right now, and this guy is on fire. You know what they say, only you can prevent forest fires caused by immolating humans. The spirit speaks in a tongue that sounds like wind over sand. Okay, so he's got like a Dr. Manhattan thing going on. Want to look at his winky. Tabira, how could you leave me to face this alone? You're blaming the dead guy right now. He's dead. <laughs> how could you leave me like this? Really, even in death, you're not going to give him a break? It's still his fault, and he's dead. Man, this is a hard world to live in. I don't know if I could date that girl. <laughs> That's brutal. What is that? You can now cook with mushrooms for this and all future journeys. And believe me, the journeys are going to get psychedelic with that in hand. Did I talk to this guy over here on his crazy little patio? Ah, yes, the hero of ages. That's you, certainly, especially when you spend your opals. Oh, you moved. Okay. Oh, no, she's still in the same spot. Who is this dude? Icarus Sapphira. In her wisdom, the Great Mother provides abundance only to those with gentle hearts or sharp minds. Or a crazy mask, apparently, since we're all rocking those things. Let's get up and out of here, I suppose. I don't know if there's anything we really need to do. The Great Mother watches over the village. Her face has grown from ancient wood. The Wolf Clan says Moon births all life and nurtures all instinct, calling even the tiniest worm her daughter. Oh, cool, we got cunning. See, you should always look around in this game. You never know what you're going to find. Seriously, every time I just walk around clicking on stuff in this game, I end up, like, getting cool little bonuses and things. Let's see here. Your schemes are many and effective. So we got that Loki thing going on right now. We like to keep it low-key. I mean, that is to say we like to use cunning and stuff like that. So there's a solarium. Places we can go. Leaf Trink Thicket. We can go to Crystal Range. We can go to the Sun-Cursed Barrens. Or we can go to Silva Forest. Let's go with Leaf Trink Thicket, I guess. I like green areas, so we'll go with that one. There's no right choice. You kind of just want to pick one based on what you want to do. And so it looks like combat. Oh, no. These things are awful. These things are seriously like a giant pain. So as I understand it, you got to let them charge you. And then when they charge you, you got to hit them from behind. And that's how you deal damage to them. I, I fiddled around with these last night and was lightly frustrated, but that happens sometimes. And by that happens, apparently I meant catching a savage ass whooping and getting robbed by a bunch of forest creatures. It's a tough neighborhood to be in. That's what I learned today. What we were supposed to, well, I don't really... I think we need to take an activity here. What it was supposed to be. I'm going to stargaze some more because we need the magical energy. Inkidu stares at the night sky and attempts to comprehend. He gains five intellect and two faith. So that'll be good. As dawn breaks, a figure approaches the camp. King Mardok announces that the righteous sun was hereby vanquished and destroyed the temptress moon. All tribes are graciously allowed to swear fealty to King Mardok. You, however, must die. Prepare yourself for annihilation in three dawns from now. Hell no. I don't get annihilated. He ignores your words and retreats. You better before I cut you into pieces with these leaves. Could the Queen of Heaven really be destroyed? Surely there's another explanation. Yeah, I fought those things before and they're a pain in the ass. Basically, it just takes forever. You gotta kite in circles around them and then they can't charge when they're on top of your leaves, which means you have to take the risk of letting them charge. It's just... They give you a ton of treasure, though, if you can kill them on the plus side. Let's check out this mountain range area and see what we can get done here. If I hadn't got pinned behind that rock, I would have been good. As a geologist, I feel a little bit betrayed right now. He's supposed to help me out. The rock was supposed to be like, I got you back, and jump into the fray, and he didn't. He failed me. He allowed me to die on camera like a fool in front of all the internetses. Come on, a little bit of damage for this giant. I don't even know what the hell that thing is. It's like a bear hippo. It's like a bippo. Kill that thing off real fast. Down it goes, and it should drop a pretty ample supplement of treasure to make up for the couple of opals we lost last time. We only lost, like, one opal, so it's not that big of a deal. We've got a cave over here. Ow! I've got bugs that appear to be spitting some kind of honey bun at me. Which is a little bit worrisome. Let me see if I can stay out of the way. We've got vultures that were mostly minding their own business, but then I murdered them. And so I guess that's the natural way of things. You leave me alone, and then I murder you. Oh my god, there's so many opals right now. I would appreciate a button that sucks all the opals to you. So I've got to run around. I, I, I enjoy picking them up, don't get me wrong. But like a button that would make it go zoop, and then bring all the opals to you would be really, really awesome. It would be super... Don't even try that shit with me, Vulture. I'm not afraid. Every time I go for my run, every day I run a couple miles, five miles to be exact. 
and there's this big tree right at the entrance to the running trail that I get to, and there's always like 400 California condors in it. Like legitimately the entire tree, it's a giant like eucalyptus tree, and it's got more birds than you can count up in it, and they're all vultures just sitting there waiting for a meal. I don't know, it's a tad foreboding. It's definitely, I wonder if you can fish or something. Like is this a fishing cave, or what is this for, I wonder. God, I love the animations, it all just looks so good. Yeah, it kind of looks like a dance that he's doing. Get down. You can also do like a little whirly bird thing like that right there. Yeah, you can actually do a dance if you press the F key. But like, get down and die. What? Yeah. He's also got a... There we go. We can also do a little twirly do thing right there. There's lots of emotes that you can do in this game. It's supposed to be a social game. I'm supposed to have friends while I play this. It's for multiplayer. But unfortunately, my poor social skills and inability to groom properly have deprived me. I've been so deprived. What is this? Did I just destroy it? I bet that was a cooking ingredient. I just destroyed it like an idiot. I thought it might drop treasure. I was like, bequeath upon me your treasure. What is this? Oof. My son's illness worsens. Thought if I made a pilgrimage, and now that I'm here, those steps are more steep than I thought. I'm gonna encourage him. I needed the Queen of Heaven's blessing, not your pity. Go ahead, I'll catch up, maybe. I encouraged you. Huh. Maybe he gets upset when you encourage him. He's one of those people where you're like, come on, man, get that workout done. And they're like, stop talking to me while they're working out. What the... He sniffs in your direction, a low growl in his throat. I return the snarl. You take a dominant posture and assert your superiority. He clambers up the rocky mountain and disappears into the crags. I don't have time to deal with Gollum right now. You feel watched. New trait. Brave. Hell yeah. That's one of those good traits to have if you're going to be an adventurer. What is this over here? Would you like to heal and revive all of your party members? Nah, we're good for right now. I don't think we're going to need it. Although, I think you can get patience from this, maybe. Yeah, let's do it. The goddess heals your wounds. It doesn't look like I got pa- I thought maybe- I thought I got patience last time I did. It looks like those flowers don't do anything. So it's like a big bunch of... Allergy-inducing- Ooh, hey, what's up, pal? How you doing? And Kidu, lucky you should stop by. I found this remarkable ore. It's harder than anything I've ever seen. You seem like you could overcome any challenge. What do you think is the best way to extract the ore from the rock? Uh, let's finesse it out. Together you devise a pressure system to pry the ore loose. Eventually a few glowing fragments are freed. Lovely, and all without breaking a sweat. Thanks for your help. Oh, I already had cunning. Do you get like cunning level 2, maybe? Is it like reinforce my cunning? It's like upgraded cunning. It's like cunning plus one. I don't think that's how it works. Got another bird over here. I think the magic damage is what affects our little ranged attack. I think physical damage is for like the witch and some of the other characters. God, there's so many opals on this map. We might be able to make it out of here with a couple of upgrades. You don't get XP or anything like that. Everything in the game is basically purchased. So it's either purchased or it's earned through doing random events. Just so you know, like we're not gaining XP for doing any of this stuff. I'm just trying to get rich. How much? We got 74 opals right now? Okay. We almost got enough for a big upgrade. Nothing hiding in the bushes over there. That's a blood pile right there. Oh, shit. What has happened? Oh, hell no. Get out of here. I got time for your shenanigans, puppy. Ooh, let's keep moving. With these, it's probably best since they're throwing apple fritters and shit at me. To line them up in such a way where... There we go. Man, that looked like a classic jump in. All I wanted to do was walk by some blood piles. What I learned today is that when you see blood piles, you should not walk up to them. That is what I have learned. Blood piles tend to denote places that you probably should not be. Don't even try that shit with me, my baking little friends. Couple more leaves to the dome. What kind of leaf is he throwing at him that it would cause that much damage? That's a gnarly ass leaf right there. Oh, there's another one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll wait and see if I catch some heals or something first. Yeah, I was going to say because I'm having trouble keeping up with these little buggy things. It's usually best if you can get them like cornered up because then all the projectiles will be coming from the same direction. You can just leave them out of the sky super easy. What's this over here? I've never seen this emblem on the map before. Oh, it's a campsite. Okay, sweet. 
That's perfectly fine. I don't know with half health if we should go in there and check out that cave. I'm not interested really in losing all of the stuff that we've striven for at this point. Like, we've got a bunch of stuff, and if we could take it back, we can get an upgrade right now. And I think risking it on big adventures and big rewards is a little terrifying. What is this? The food strangely doesn't smell like anything. Perhaps somebody more foolish would take a bite. I don't have the foolish trait, so I'm not going to worry about it. Let's continue downwards in this wang-shaped area of the map. Got her a hairdryer that's pointed up at the sky. I think... Should we do the cave? God, Nerd Castle, what do you think? Should we do it? Was there also another area down here I hadn't explored? If there's opportunities to get more health, I'd rather do that. If I was at full health, I would just blaze forward brazenly, but I'm not sure that's the situation that we're in right now. Oh, shit. Bunch of bugs down here. Oh, they've got a hive. Okay, so we got to wipe out the hive. If I can aim my leaves, this is why I took the long-range leaves, too, is because sometimes you can hit them from, like, kind of off-screen. And if you can manage that one, it turns out a lot better for you. You can now cook with honey for this and all future journeys. Sweet. If you got the money, honey, I got the honey for the money, I guess. Enkidu's starting a prostitution ring. Oh, look, upgrades. Let's get the moonlight out of those opals. So we can take overgrowth, which allows us to have two vine fields at once. We can take awe, which allows us when we transform to stun things. I don't know which would be better. It looks like that's all she's got. Guess I'll go with awe since I want to spend now. Oh yeah, look at that. It gave us like a little AoE and now we can check around a little bit faster. I think we're just about out of time for the day, so let me squeeze the trigger on this cave over here. Yeah, you can't use the... I know people are going to be like, why didn't you go back to the shrine? You can't use it twice, I don't think. I think you can only use it once. The cave smells of blood and death. Nothing to fear here. Let's see what's inside. Ooh. A little bit of freebie health, although it looks like it refilled us anyways. These little shrine things don't look like we can interact with them, and I don't think I could break the walls or anything. Cool. I mean, we, we called that one's bluff and turned out okay. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the episode of Moon Hunters that I have recorded today, this morning, in my house. I will see you all if you wanted to get the game and you like what it's all about. Look down below. I'll have linkage for you so that you can grab that thing up on Steam. Bye, everybody. I'll see you next time.